Um, what we're currently doing is in adding to that the behavioral modifications of passengers under conditions of heel. So what you've seen in these calculations only take into account reduction, the actual reduction in travel speed due to heel. It doesn't take into account the behavioral changes that we've seen in all the, all the, all the trials that we've run. We're, we're currently incorporating those changes. And one of the things that um, you'd note is that there wasn't a, a, a huge difference in the um, actual total muster times. But part of, part of the reason for that is the muster deck, uh, passengers were traveling from the bottom up and also from the top down. And what we've seen in some of the trials is that the heel, for example, on the stairs, will influence people differently going up the stairs and down the stairs. In some cases, you'll find um, that the people may even travel a little bit faster um, going down than, the, than they will going up. So you've got to take all of those factors into account. It's actually quite complex, and it's only when you put it into um, uh, 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 an individual person model like, um, like EVI or Exodus, we'll, you'll see these sorts of changes, these, these rich um, uh, individual changes. Okay. that it states simulations of the population it doesn't state 50 runs of fire case does it yeah Edwards <laughs> it will possibly yeah but so what you do 50 CFD runs I mean yeah. we for example yeah I mean smart fire for example runs in parallel on uh, multiple um, uh, CPUs multiple uh, processes run 50 cases of fire as well if you have to if that's what uh, if that's what is required that's what we have to do but that's no longer an onerous task I mean it's 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 doable Okay. Erica Kuligowski, NIST. Um, I was, I believe that you talked about the majority of the injuries and the casualties um, from the response time. Can yeah. you talk about how um, you came up, I believe you said it was 7 to 13 minutes response time. Is that because of the nighttime scenario? Or? Yeah, that's night time. It's a stipulated sort of response time. Um, possibly you could look at the impact and making people respond when they're affected by this, whether when the heat or the toxic gases reach a certain level, you could have made people respond then. But we just kept it as simple as possible and kept the response times as before, just to demonstrate as simple as the impact of. Okay. Let me first, let me comment at the end. There's another question. Bill Grosshandler, NIST. Uh, can I ask you what correlations were you using to indicate the slowdown of people in the fire environment? Yeah, we use a fractive effective model, and we have basically data. I think that was Purser's data we used for that. Okay. In, in Exodus, there's several models used for the effect of fire. Let me just, just caution you. The um, uh, while I think it's quite useful to yeah. demonstrate, show this as a demonstration as to how fire might be yeah. uh, included in uh, such an evacuation calculation, uh, the statement you made uh, that uh, this may be a rationale for reducing the 10-minute safety factor, I think, is not supportable yet. I mean, I, I like the direction you're going, but uh, you, you have to be very careful because uh, the, the, the way the fire is... Um, uh, allowed to progress and the dynamics of the fire and, and so uh, that, that's my only caution. It, yeah, it's a well, I didn't, well basically uh, the 10 minute safety factor is meant to incorporate possible um, problems. If you notice the fire case actually took, was increased by more than 10 minutes. So there's probably also another t safety factor to add on there because it is a simulation. It's just the question is how much it should be. Uh, Ed Galley, just, just to respond to some of, some of the comments. Um, the response time distribution we used was the response time distribution from IMO. In the fire simulation, we didn't allow the smoke, heat and toxic products to enter the cabins. The cabins were, were fire free, smoke free. And so that's the rationale we used to maintain the IMO um, response times. Within maritime exodus, if the passengers are exposed to a certain level of smoke, heat, 
uh, they will override their, their prescribed response time and, and then take off. So the response time can be um, uh, over, overridden by the exposure of the passengers to the hazards. The travel speed of people in smoke, what we've done is we've used the data that we've been using for the last five years from building Exodus on how people behave and move in smoke conditions. The data that we, 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 we use there um, are, is the Japanese data that was collected some time ago uh, and, and uh, is, the, uh, is, 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 based, is based on the movement of people in irritant smoke conditions. As part of the EU project fire exit that we're currently doing, we are, we are, we've just finished putting about four or five hundred people through smoke-filled corridors on ships uh, at different angles of heel, and we are now looking at measuring the rate, the, the change in travel speed of people in smoke, different smoke concentrations at angles of heel. And now that's going to be incorporated in this as soon as we've done the data analysis on that. So we've got a fair amount of data um, now in terms of uh, people moving in smoke and at angles of heel. And the point about the safety factor is we, we would never suggest that you remove the safety factor. But the question is, is it appropriate to use the same safety factor that you use when you are ignoring fire, flooding and everything else when you're actually incorporating some of it? So I think the answer there is you do use a safety factor, but it would be a nonsense to use exactly the same safety factor as you did when you've ignored all of those things. Okay. Last statement. Is there another one? Directly to this or? You also. So. Um, yes, just, just continue this discussion because this is very interesting. And uh, Also, uh, authorities are prepared to look at the reduction of these safety factors provided you take into account, you eliminate the assumptions that led to the safety yeah. factor. And uh, was just mentioned fire, uh, flooding, uh, okay. crew, and, and so on. Uh, I'm going to, to address just a point which I found very interesting, the 40 second difference uh, in 20 degrees hill. Uh, we also found out uh, that it's, um, how, although you have very rich variations in uh, microscopic behavior, and you see lots of variations in congestion and so on, the overall assembly time, or however you refer to the travel time, is influenced uh, less by these variations because there are many variations. Yeah. So it's, uh, we, we are coming slowly to the conclusion that the, uh, the response time is the main variable, the mean response time, the main variable affects the, the overall uh, assembly time. So if you take that out, there would be a simple function, and I'm thinking that of assembly time for ship type. I'm going as far as that. So um, we, we believe that there would be a way to have a closed form um, solution for assembly time for a ship type because yeah. really whatever you do there are so many variabilities in local uh, microscopic behavior that the overall time is affected minimally. Yeah. Do well this is a case with any evacuation there's factors that have a major contribution to it and response time is one of the biggest factors in any evacuation the longer people take to respond has the biggest impact and then you say it's doors and so on and then you work your way down the behaviors and then you add them in and then you hope to incorporate to get closer to reality. Okay. Uh, it's like it's not the microscopic behaviors, it's not as, it, the most important is the macroscopic behavior, i.e. how people navigate, what routes they take, when they respond, and then the low level microscopic behavior adds on to that. But that's only like slight adjustments in the data. <coughs> like it's far more important to say which room people will be in, when they will be there, rather than down to the nearest millimeter. Okay. Dave Purser again, I, I want to just pick up again on the, on the response time or pre-movement time because this worries me rather a lot. You may have the data, in which case yeah. that would be great. But um, to me, a, a ship like this, a cruise ship, is a floating hotel. Yeah. And again, it's very difficult to get good data from hotels because they won't let us depopulate a hotel in the middle of the night. But from fire instances that we have had in the UK over the years in, in hotel fires, often it can take people an hour before 